Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is my colleague Jennifer Hassler. And we recently wrote a paper together titled Blackmer's VCA Cell Implemented Using Subthreshold MOSFETs. It has been published in the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society. In 1973, David Blackmer patented this circuit that's a voltage-controlled amplifier with an exponential control law. Integrated circuits with this technology were originally offered under the name DBX. Nowadays, chips containing that IP are sold by that corporation. Yeah, it's actually called that corporation. DBX chips are used in the voltage-controlled filters of the Fairlight Series 3. And Serge Cherepnin used some black cells built out of discrete transistors in his synthesizer circuits. But black cells are mostly found in studio gear, like mixers and compressors by SSL, and of course DBX compressors. The black cell exploits the exponential current voltage characteristic of BJTs. The most common model for a MOSFET says that the drain current follows a square law for gate-to-source voltages above a certain threshold. And most typical electronics classes will assume that this drain current is zero for gate-to-source voltages below that threshold. But that's not the case. This model here with the square law, that's referred to as the strong inversion region. If you are below the threshold, then the current actually follows an exponential characteristic, kind of like a BJT. This is referred to as the weak inversion region. Now, people who design digital integrated circuits generally consider this to be an undesirable parasitic effect. But in analog circuit design, subthreshold behavior opens up a whole world of design possibilities for low power circuits. And there are situations where you may want to exploit that exponential characteristic. I thought it would be interesting to try replacing the BJTs in a black cell with MOSFETs operating in the subthreshold regime. And I simulated the circuit using a tool chain based on Scilab and Xcos that was developed for field programmable analog arrays that my colleague Jennifer Hassler and her students developed. This is along the lines of some earlier work we did, where we implemented a Moog ladder filter using subthreshold MOSFETs. If you'd like to learn more about such things, I would like to invite you to check out my playlist titled Adventures in FPAAs. I also recommend checking out Professor Hassler's YouTube channel, as well as her online materials for her ECE 4430 Analog Integrated Circuit Design class and her EC6435 class on neuromorphic circuits.